So, last night, I spent pretty much all night writing up um, the way I wanted the show to go today. And in doing the monologue, I had pretty much finished the monologue last night when it came down that Donald Trump had COVID-19. Now, Donald Trump, there's a video of Donald Trump on Sean Hannity having the conversation with Sean Hannity when Hope Hicks, his very attractive assistant, who apparently is very close to Donald Trump and goes around with Donald Trump all the time, came down with COVID-19. This was last night. CBS News has learned Hope Hicks tested negative for COVID-19 Wednesday morning. So she boarded AF1, Air Force One. She developed symptoms during the day and received a second test, which came back positive. Isn't that terrifying? Think about that for a second. All of these tests that people are taking in are like, yes, I'm good. And you find basically a false positive with her getting symptoms later that day, which came back, the second test, positive. The White House knew about this Wednesday, but Trump still had a fundraiser Thursday. Gotta get those bucks, gotta get those bucks. Now, what is the practical reality of this? The president of the United States goes on Shine Hannity, talks about the Hope Hicks thing. She's a hard worker and all of this other stuff. But at the end of the day, she's infected. And as she got infected, you got infected. Now, the reports are that Donald Trump was terrified of getting infected, that he would have places scrubbed down, that he was ensure that this was straight, that that was straight, and people and all the stuff. Because he didn't necessarily want to deal with the reality of the public seeing its president sick and laid low with the disease that he, for the longest time, denied was an issue on videotape or, or an audio tape, makes the point that he understands that this is a big deal. He understands how infectious this is. He understands it because he's getting information from China. He knows, he knows, he knows. And yet, he downplays for months on end, downplays. Thousands dead, hundreds of thousands dead. And the president of the United States, for whatever reason, could not bring himself to utilize the powers and capabilities of the office to deal with the real material concerns of the public, be it economic or medical. Richest country on the planet. They give 1,200 bucks to Americans. Many people don't get those checks for months. And when they do get those checks, you have to ask yourself, how far does $1,200 actually go? Mnuchin at one point said, this should last for three months. Now, granted, he was talking about the employment benefits, but let's be very clear about something. The employment benefits have just gone bust. You have millions, uh, uh, yeah, millions of people that are potentially going to be thrown out of their homes. You have, what, 207,000 people infected with the virus or, or died from it. The expectation being 300,000 by Christmas. How many ever hundreds of thousands uh, by New Year's? And going further with that, the number of people that are affected, 7 million, many of which, if I'm not mistaken, the overwhelming majority, up to the tune of like 80, 90%, has symptoms going beyond the fact that they had the illness. I'm making the point that the responsibility, philosophical, legal responsibility, to deal with the concerns of the public does indeed rest in the executive branch. Yes, Congress needs to pass laws because they have the purse, but at the end of the day, the tone is set by the president of the United States. And this president downplayed this virus. So now this president is infected. How am I supposed to regard that? Am I going to be a petty Betty? Am I going to be bitter with hundreds of thousands of people that are dying? But I know the president could have pushed these businesses to make masks and make drugs and make these things that the public itself required. When I know that the executive branch should have been less incompetent when you had hospitals not fighting over your supplies, or for that matter, when the federal government would raid supplies of various states, which got to the point where these hospitals start hiding their supplies, or you had states that would guard their supplies with the police. Think about that. That's an incompetence on a breathtaking level where you basically have states and the federal government going after each other for resources, as opposed to having a consistent plan. Donald Trump had months to deal with this virus. And right now we know, based on the communications that he's had, leaked, leaked messages, that he knew that this virus was significant. He knew this virus was going to be severe. And so, yes, is there a bit of schadenfreude in here? Yes, I do get pleasure out of this. Call me a horrible person. 
Say it's not great for you to get pleasure out of those type of things. Say you yourself, sir, can be struck down with it. And you are absolutely right. I could be struck down with it. Nevertheless, a president of the United States that flagrantly disregarded the fact of all of these people dying, flagrantly disregarded all of these people being affected and flagrantly disregarded the results of this. The 30 million people out of a job, the what, 30, 40 million people without health care. Keep in mind, 20 something million people didn't have health care when Obamacare was passed, meaning after Obamacare was passed. So now what, you have another 12, 15 million more. These things weren't dealt with. The number of people that don't have a job. There was no jobs program that was put out from the standpoint of the presidency. No imagination even went to those things. Didn't even care. What the president cared about was forcing people back into their jobs, even if those people were susceptible to the illness. He want to get the economy back up and running. Well, the honest reality of it is, if the president just accepted the reality that people would have used masks early on, the economy would have been back up and running. Those kids could have been back to school. But instead, we we're sending kids to school in hostile situations from their own health standpoint. We're sending teachers into situations that are hostile from their own standpoint. Betsy DeVos couldn't be bothered with coming up with a concerted plan for education around the country since the president wants to force people back into school. I'm making the point that this president put people in flagrantly horrific situations regarding health. And now he's infected. I don't hate this. I thought last night, there's a God. There's a God. Now, whatever you want to make think of me um, for saying something like that, the reality of it is when you come at me about how horrible of a person I am for saying that, you also explain to me why I should care considering the number of people that Donald Trump are responsible in regards to their deaths, responsible for their illness. And then you get to the racial skew where you get African-Americans and Hispanics at this two or three to one rate higher, depending upon where you are in the nation. No, call me whatever you want. At the end of the day, Donald Trump put this nation in a position that has laid it low, has made it a centerpiece of the world, an epicenter for this virus. Do you realize we have 300 million people in this country? China has like 1.3 million. India is behind us, even though they're catching up. But again, another country with 1.3 billion. And we, in this country, 200,000 people dead, and we lead the world in this. This is not exceptional. And it's not exceptional because one man, one president, made the choice to prioritize business, even from the standpoint of looting the treasury while the country was on fire. That president is now infected, and that president will now have to deal with the consequences of the virus like everybody else has had to deal with the consequences of the virus. 42%, if I am not mistaken, at the very least it was last month, of the people that have died from this virus, this number may be changing now because many of the people who are getting infected are younger, but 42% at the time were elderly or people who were working at those facilities. Now, Donald Trump is one of the elderly men, the hamburger eating Donald Trump that is massively unhealthy in his 70s, and now he is infected with COVID-19. And we're gonna see these things don't have great mortality rates. And there will be questions about um, giving power away if Donald Trump actually indeed gets really sick as many older people like Donald Trump do. This is not a rah-rah, but it is a bit of shot of fraud. And it is a bit of looking around and say, there is a God. And yes, I hope it hurts. And I hope the recovery takes a very long time. And yes, I want him to fully, entirely understand the reality that all of these people in this country have to deal with as a result of his incompetence, his failure, his unempathy as a president of the United States. You guys are listening to Fault Lines with Thomas Stranahan running it solo, but I will be back in a moment. <laughs>